So did all your summer plans it's get cancelled last yeah. minute and now you are lying on your bed bored out of your mind. The next school year is coming but you still haven't accomplished much yet. Well I got you. We're gonna make this summer the most fun, beautiful and productive summer ever. Hi I'm Charlotte Fressa, a second year computational neuroscience PhD student and today I want to give you three topics or three ideas, areas that you can use to make your summer a little bit more productive, a fun and or learn reset yourself. So we're gonna dive straight into it. So the three topics I want to talk about today is one for your resume, so how to get certain ideas or topics for that you can put on your resume after you finish this summer. The second one is for learning. I myself find curiosity and wisdom two of the most important topics and I think the summer is such a good time to really explore these. And three is building habits and a healthier mindset. I think throughout the year it's kind of hard sometimes to focus on healthy habits and or a healthy mindset and I think the summer is a really good time to reset yourself. So let's get into the first topic. So the first topic I want to talk about is for your resumes. So I want to give you a list of six ideas that you can use to upgrade or spice up your resume a little bit. I think the summer, especially if you're a student, is usually around two to three months and that's just a really good period to upgrade your resume a little bit. And if you haven't applied for an internship and you're now really regretting that, I still think you can do a lot of work and or projects to make your resume stand out amongst the crowd. So the first thing I want to say is to show your work and this is kind of from this book Austin Cleon and he really actually inspired me to make a YouTube channel because the idea from show your work is that your work doesn't really exist unless it's somewhere out there on the internet or in real life and I think a lot of us actually have a lot of skills and or ideas but we never really put them out there and even if people People are not really watching you or looking at what you're doing I still think it's good if you have a small hub on the internet to show your work and show what you're actually doing and are passionate about so the first thing I would recommend to you is to for example start a YouTube channel of course this may sound crazy if you never considered it but if you even in the slightest have considered to start a YouTube channel and or TikTok I would highly recommend it. I think it has taught me so much from video editing, storytelling, and also just getting over the fear of people judging you or having an opinion about you on the internet. And a second thing you can think of is, for example, to start a project on Kaggle. So I think it's really good if you want to upgrade your coding skills, for example, during the summer to look at these kind of projects from Kaggle. So on Kaggle is this website where you can join a competition or look at certain coding projects. And these projects you can then put on your GitHub, for example, if you've completed one. And they are quite time intensive. So myself, I have been telling myself to finish a Kaggle competition for ages now but just because it takes so much time to really accomplish something in this field or on a competition like this I haven't been able to but I am planning for the next year to finally put my feet down and try to really finish a Kaggle competition. If you're by the way interested or maybe wanting to do this together or something like that I am thinking of perhaps starting like a study group so if you're interested in something like that put it down in the comments below and perhaps at a certain point I will start a study group or on YouTube or on Zoom just to see if we can motivate and inspire each other. So the third thing you can consider is to start a website and or blog, blog posts. So I personally really love reading blog posts and I think it's it's a really good way to establish a writing practice and also to increase your writing skills. So starting a website is actually really easy nowadays. You have websites like Squarespace or Ghost that I'm sure most of you have heard of. So for about eight euros, I think per month, this is not sponsored by the way, but you can get a Squarespace platform and then you can start your website. And I think especially if you're in your undergrad or during your graduate degree, you learn a lot of topics and or skills that you will probably later forget. And it's kind of nice if during this time you can already start the habit of writing down little blog posts on the things you have learned. And you never really know when you put your work on the internet what will come out of it. It could be that someone reads your blog post and is really inspires and inspired and then reaches out to you and maybe you can get another opportunity or a friend or something like that. So I think having your work somewhere on the internet is really important. 
On number four, you can start a tutorial on Medium. So if you're a programmer, you probably know websites like Medium. And these are usually websites where people put a little article or an explanation or a tutorial on a skill or thing they have learned. And I personally use Medium a lot when I'm programming. And I think if you're also programming or have another skill, it's kind of good to put the things you learn on a website like Medium and perhaps help someone else develop their skills or bring them, give them a leg up. And I think when you're considering on what to put on the internet, it's good to think about things that you use the most. So if, for example, you're an avid, Twitter user it's kind of good to also start sending out tweets just to contribute to the conversation and to the platforms that you really like using. On number five a really good website that I like is Fiverr or Upwork and this is more if you want to for example do some teaching or you have a certain skill that you want to share and the thing I like about Fiverr is that you can kind of put yourself on there as a freelancer and for example if you're a student in a certain field you can consider teaching high school students on Fiverr or if you have some data coding skills you can also put these skills on there and people will hire you and I know some friends of mine have made quite a lot of money on a website as Fiverr and that is kind of nice during the summer if you can just get some extra cash. And on number six and maybe this is already a little bit too late but is to reach out to certain professors to ask them if they have an internship position. During a period that I had between my two master's degrees I had this six months period where I wasn't really doing anything and at that time I decided to reach out to a professor I knew in Berlin and asked him if he had a position and he actually told me he could get a small funding scheme for me and so I could go to Berlin for six months without really having to pay anything and I learned a lot during that time and this just came out of me sending one small email and of course I have to tell you to be respectful when you approach these professors and be really sincere in your interests because if you're not super involved in the research they do or super interested they usually don't reply back but in general it is kind of good to reach out to a few professors and maybe one of them will reply back and you can get a really cool internship then the second topic that i kind of want to dive into is to learn new skills during summer so i think summer is the perfect period to set up learning a new skill for the new year so for example if during the new year you have thought of oh i would love to learn this skill it is kind of hard usually during the year to make time for learning this new skill and I think especially the first few weeks of learning a new skill are really important because usually if you already get if you already get the momentum it's kind of easy to continue learning a skill but if you have to start from scratch it is kind of good to put in some intensive work at the beginning so there are different kind of things that you can consider to learn a new skill of course the most obvious one is to do MOOCs online or these online tutorials slash courses and I will give a list of three that I really like so I really like this course on Coursera called machine learning by Andrew Nguyen, Nguyen? I, I never know how to pronounce his na last name but it's one of the most popular courses on machine learning right now and he even has provided this machine learning specialization I will put the link down below and another course that I've talked about before but that I really like if you're interested in programming or want to get into it it's called 100 days of code and it's really teaches you everything about Python and how to set up different coding projects and how to make projects and the coolest thing I think about it is in the last 10 days of this course you will learn how to set up your own projects that you can even put on GitHub for example and then on that related note I also really like data camp I've heard from a lot of friends that are a little bit more beginners that data camp is a really easy and friendly way to learn coding I think if you already know a little bit of coding it's maybe a little bit too easy but I do think it's good if you're a beginner to get into the coding workflow. Another thing that you can consider during summer is to join a summer school. So for example I just finished a summer school in Nurmatch. I was a TA there and I thought it was one of the most brilliant summer schools I've ever been to so or ever taught at. So if you're thinking of doing a summer school I would highly recommend this one. It's in computational neuroscience and they teach you about computational neuroscience and everything related to the field. It's three weeks and it, I do have to say it's super intense and what I've heard from the students they really enjoyed it but it was really hard at the beginning but I do think 
joining a summer school like this or another topic that you're interested in is a really nice way to meet people that are interested in the same field as you and also to learn a lot about a topic that is not at university because I think at university a lot of times because we get grades this can be really demotivating whereas in a summer school you really learn about a topic in this like free spirited way where just the focus is on learning and not on getting grades or beating your peers and for me at least that's really refreshing refreshing and a really nice way to learn about a new topic without the pressure of university. And the third thing I would consider to uh, learn a language. So if you're thinking about studying a language, I think that's a really good idea. So I myself have learned a lot of languages in the past in the different countries that I lived in. And I think that usually when I started learning a language, I usually started it during summer. Because in summer, it's just a, such a good time to really immerse yourself in the language. So you can consider moving to that country for a little bit or traveling in that country for a little bit but even if you don't have that money or time there are amazing websites such as italki or linguda that allow you to speak with native speakers through zoom for example without having to travel there i myself am now considering to restart learning french a little bit i used to be really good at it but i haven't spoken french for five years i think but i think summer is a really good time to restart this habit and kind of kickstart my learning journey if you're considering of learning a language i would love to to hear what kind of language you're considering of learning or which languages you speak i always am very interested in fellow linguists so put it down in the comments below and the last topic i want to talk about is building better and cleaner habits so i think throughout the year we can kind of let go of ourselves a little bit and there are certain habits at least for me that really slip through and that i usually forget thinking about and these are habits such as eating good food and cooking a really good meal or habits such as exercising and i think retraining your habits during summer is a really nice period because you can really consider like why did i let go of these habits throughout the year because you really have the time during summer to kind of focus on certain habits and if they don't work for you to kind of consider why is this habit not working for me and what do I have to change in my environment or in my psyche to kind of retrain or reintroduce this habit. So for habits that I would consider working on if um, that I usually also work on during my summers are reading books. I love reading books and I read books a lot but sometimes I do have to say during stressful exam periods or when I have to work a lot it is a habit that sometimes slips through and usually when I'm in summer I really try to rethink my environment such that I can optimize reading books so for example I put my kindle next to my bed again or buy a few new books that I want to read for the new year and also I update my goodreads such that all the books that I want to read are in there and all the books that I've read throughout the year are kind of in there as well so one book that I'm reading right now is Atlas of the Heart by Brene Brown and it's an amazing book. If you're considering a summer read, I would highly recommend it. It teaches you all about emotions and the language of emotion and how we can speak better about our emotions and communicate it better to friends and family. Another habit I am working on right now on the summer is just going outside more. I personally love being outside, but I'm also very much a homebody, so I also love being inside. But things I try to do during summer that I usually do indoors are, for example, swimming. I usually go swimming with my sister a lot but during summer it's actually kind of nice to go swimming outside and not in a swimming pool. Another one is hiking. I really like walking and uh, going outside but rediscovering hiking routes usually takes a lot of time and I think summer is perfect for that because then I can just invite a few friends and we walk around the neighborhood and see if there are a few new areas or routes that we can consider walking on. Another habit that I usually really cultivate during summer are these ha habits of mindfulness or joy and peace and I think a few things that I really do try to do more mindful during summer is creating beautiful meals for example so usually when I cook I tend to just um, eat what's in the fridge as fast as possible but during summer you have a little bit more time and it's for example really nice to go to the market and pick out some really nice fruits or to have a little discussion at the farmer's market which is the best produce and where you can buy it and I think these kind of habits really do spark joy and sometimes it's a bit hard to make time for them and the last 
type of habits that I always work on during summer is exercise. And with exercise, I don't really mean making a new routine, but usually I try to discover new sports or exercise that I really love. So right now I'm doing like kind of like become yoga or hot yoga. And it's just a different type of yoga that I've never considered before because I usually always do Ashtanga. And it's just a little bit different. And during summers, you just have a little bit more time mentally as well to explore new possibilities. So if there's a certain sports you've considered of trying, I think during the summers is a really good period because usually there are also discounts at certain schools and you can just try it. And you can also invite some of your friends that maybe throughout the year they kind of are busy or they have to work a lot. In summers, usually most of us have a little bit more time so you can explore these new exercises regimes together. So these were my tips for having an optimal summer but the most important of course is that you have as much as fun and enjoyment as possible and really try to meet your friends and family. If you have any crazy summer plans for this year I would love to hear them so put them down in the comments below and otherwise see you next week. Bye!